Welcome to What's Trending. I'm Cheryl Lazar. On the show today, we have actress and producer Ileana Douglas and hunky host Cameron Matheson. We'll sit down with Wilmer Valderrama to find out what he's trying to kickstart and get a special live in-studio performance from David Choi. To interact with other folks watching the show, head over to our room on chill.com. And don't forget to go to getglue.com right now and check in to earn exclusive stickers. It's October 18th, and here's what's trending now. Zachary Quinto's decision to declare himself a gay man in a New York Magazine interview has received an overwhelmingly positive response online. In his blog, Quinto mentioned how much the tragic suicide of 14-year-old Jamie Rodemeyer impacted his life. Jamie's story and many others have inspired us to plan a Stop Bullying special live town hall on October 27th in partnership with MTV's The Thin Line campaign. Be on the lookout for more updates on that soon. The Occupy Wall Street movement has been with us for just over a month and is still going strong with just over half a million social mentions last week. And of course, the protest has moved far beyond Lower Manhattan to Toronto, Portugal, Rome, and even Taiwan. Closer to home in Washington, D.C. on Sunday, activist Dr. Cornell West was arrested for holding up a sign on the steps of the Supreme Court. In a moment, we'll discuss how those hoping to occupy the White House next year are going to get the votes of the 99%. In other political news, the Nevada GOP presidential debate in Las Vegas is expected to be a top trending topic tonight. Like many debates this political season, this one will be a two-screen experience for many viewers. The hashtag CNN debate will even be monitored by the producers, who will be pulling Twitter questions into the debate. You can catch the live stream tonight on CNN.com at 8 p.m. Eastern. Deadline Hollywood has reported that by the end of the month, Google will announce the 25 or so new professional YouTube channels they'll be launching as part of their $150 million investment fund. Rumor has it that the channels will include everyone from Tony Hawk to Warner Brothers Studios. And today we'll take a look at the evolving viability of digital distribution. The tragic death of two-time Indianapolis 500 winner Dan Weldon has caused an outpouring of grief and condolences online. There have been over 250,000 tweets and mentions relating to the race car driver. GoDaddy.com, a sponsor of Weldon's, will create a website and Facebook page where fans can honor Weldon's career. Buzz around Major League Baseball is reaching a fever pitch as the unlikely St. Louis Cardinals and unstoppable Texas Rangers get ready to face off in Game 1 of the World Series on Thursday. The top trending team right now is the Rangers. Go Rangers! Who have almost 50% more mentions than the Cardinals online. They need to get more into social, you guys. So why don't you step up to the plate by heading to our Facebook, Twitter, and blog at whatstrending.com to join the discussion. And right now, let's move on to our real-time conversation. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> We're so happy to have you joining us online today. We also have our beautiful, might I add, in-studio audience. Let's give them. They are beautiful. Yeah, they are. They're very beautiful. And over on the couch, it's our awesome What's Trending panel. Yeah, this is your cue to applaud, you guys, just a heads up. She's known for some movies as Kate Fear and Goodfellas, but recently she's been taking on the web space, producing and starring in the online series Easy to Assemble. It's Ileana Douglas. Hello. He's best known for his role as Ryan Lavery on the soap opera All My Children, but now he's online as well with the Yahoo show Ultimate Proposal. Please welcome Cameron Matheson. As usual, the lovely Melissa June Rowley to let us know what all of you are thinking throughout the show. Yes, talk to me on Twitter. You can tweet me at What's Trending or use the hashtag WTLive, and we will bring you into the conversation with all these lovely people. We definitely will. Now, this is a perfect day for you to be on, Eliana, because it is the launch. That's right. Season three. Season three of Easy to Assemble. Uh, we premiered today on uh, My Damn Channel, Easy to Assemble Series.com. I'll join all our Facebook yeah. pages and stuff. But yeah, we're 
second or th third. It's season. amazing. I was actually in a scene on one of the, <laughs> in one of the seasons. I hung out there for an entire shoot day. Mm -hmm. we, and you brought together an amazing group. Yeah, we've had people on the show. Uh, you know, from uh, Jane Lynch, Jeff Goldblum, uh, Keanu Reeves, Tim Meadows, Sherry O'Terry. Uh, J Justine Bateman, of course, this year is... Uh... I know. She somehow gets all her friends to be in these shows. Do they get the web space? Oh, yeah, totally. They get excited? I mean, yeah, everybody wants to be a part of it, and it's, it's really funny. It's a way to, you know, express yourself in a, in yeah. a different in a different medium, I guess. And now, how is it different this season? Uh, well, this season, as uh, last season, season 2.5, yeah. we were on a plane bound <laughs> for Sweden. A whole I had, season on a plane. I had beat, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I beat, I bested uh, Justine Bateman as a co-worker of the year. We had an online voting element, <laughs> and uh, cool. people voted for me, so I won. But then she, nice. uh, she undermined me. She's my frenemy on the show, and uh, I had invented the meatball delivery system, hmm. which was sending me to Sweden to meet the head of the company. But then she came up with these vegetarian uh, meatballs called bait balls. So <laughs> she was also going. This is to like Sweden. the ultimate branded entertainment. Thing. It's like the perfect connection for a brand new part of a show. Yes, like this. but so now we're in uh, this season takes place entirely in Sweden and I am uh, riding my bike, which I'm encouraging everyone to uh, try to ride your bike to work. I rode my bike no, here today. No way. Oh. Did you really? Yes, I did. So, you know, girls on bikes are very oh, hip. Yeah. So uh, uh, please, yeah, ride your bike. So I'm in, I ride my bike to meet the head of the company, played by Fred Willard, and to receive my prize, I know he's great, for Coworker of the Year, and Justine is trying to launch her show, 40 and Bitter, but is, uh, unfortunately, her long-lost brother, Jebediah Bateman, the third Bateman, <laughs> the one that nobody talks about, shows up and, uh, Causes some trouble. So for her. awesome! Well, I love yeah. the series. So I'm so happy that you're here today. Thank and Cameron, you. yes, you're also <laughs> online now. I am. Yahoo oh, no. series Ultimate Proposal. You got mm -hmm. right. 1.8 million views. The first episode, first a episode. smash hit. Yeah, and uh, the second episode launched, I think, yesterday, and we're already at about a million views already. So it's it's going wow. really Great. well. It's it's yeah. just a. It's just such a feel-good show, you know, the Ultimate Proposal team goes and helps guys propose to their <laughs> girls in, in, in like elaborate but meaningful ways, like we don't lose that kind of heart connection. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a fun and, and I don't know, it's kind of like a heart-wrenching show to watch. It's really, really sweet. How yeah. has the space tr been like for you? Because I know, you know, you're obviously on TV, Dancing with the Stars, mm -hmm. soap operas. How have you taken to the web? I, I was so excited uh, about this opportunity. First of all, all my children left uh, network television and now has been bought by yeah. Prospect Park and it's going to be launched online as well. So I was already kind of open to that, mm -hmm. to this world originally and then uh, with, uh, with Fishbowl Media and then Yahoo kind of proposing the show, pardon the pun, to me. <laughs> I, it just seems like for me it's where all, all the emphasis and a lot of the momentum is going th these days and uh, yeah, it kind of feels like a, a really Definitely. Exciting time for me. Yeah, well, speaking of that, these two strangers, or they, these two guys are no strangers to the online world, but how is Hollywood <laughs> so adapting to the web? Well, we just met, but I already feel like we're close. Yes, yes. I really I'm very do. close. I'm well, YouTube is officially actually going Hollywood. Google is getting ready to drop an estimated $150 million on 25 professional channels. And although they are under tight non-disclosure agreements, the list of potential partners are not your average YouTubers. Warner Brothers, Shine Reveille, Redman Braun, and Fremantle Media, to name a few. Now, Google hopes this investment will finally make them attractive to the big ad dollars and perhaps begin transitioning YouTube into a next generation Cable provider. Now, Eliana, mm -hmm. what do you think of all of this? The if and when of digital distribution, I mean, mm -hmm. at this point, is it here? Well, I mean, I certainly would love to be one of those people right? <laughs> that gets a little bit of that, mo that money. That would be great <laughs> for an independent producer yeah. uh, to keep doing content. But uh, I'm one of the lucky people that because I got into the web early, I mm -hmm. own all mm -hmm. my own content. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, the, the danger, the thing that we just have to be careful of as content providers is, you know, retaining our ownership. And then if there's ad rev and all those kind it of things. It gets a bit complicated. I mean, yeah. YouTube is actually saying that they can own it, but they're saying we need to bring on our ad sales team. I mean, it can get a bit complicated as yeah. you're dealing with all these. These are new models. Yeah, because, you know, the thing with the web is that there's, on the one hand, there, you want to keep the freedom because that's what is going to make things, you know, very mm -hmm. creative and, uh, 
it, it, it's the ownership issue still hasn't really been tackled. Yeah. Is, is there an aspect of it for, for you guys that reminds you a little bit of the, the big studio films, the studio films versus the independent mm -hmm. films and exactly. having that kind of balance? And, and you know, to me, it's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's exciting. I mean, I, yeah. I just recently, you know, saw you in a, in an, a great indie film. Today. Yes, and, thank you. you know, and, and here it seems like it, it may be a similar dynamic. There. It is a similar dynamic because, like, for instance, we shoot our show. I mean, we, we shot this film, The Green, um, in Connecticut, you know, 17 days, mm. you know, really low budget, and uh, and then, you know, it, it's out now. And we do the show the same way. Like, we do the, we shoot it as a, as a movie, essentially, and then yeah. we break it up into episodes later. Well, well now with, like, well, now with, just quickly, shows like you yeah, guys getting yeah, two sure. million views yeah, or so. Yeah, do you think exactly. the views are there for the ad dollars to really <clears throat> make content like that happen in a consistent way online? You know, being not, not on the production side, I think it's, it's a tough one for me to kind yeah, of go to. But just looking at the trend, Again, I'm just throwing all these puns out all over the place. <laughs> so good That's what it. you're here but, for. Uh, but, but really, looking at the trend or the way, the direction things are going, I mean, f for instance, uh, Ultimate Proposal, mm -hmm. uh, two million, like you say, two million views for the first episode, a million almost in right. the first 24 hours of the second episode right now. Um, and then a show like All My Children, which was on television, network television for 40 years, now going online, full production, uh, new New production, first, that's first so view being online. Like, this is like, there's a, there's a real momentum yeah, here. Yeah, it's a lot of momentum. And you just yeah. mentioned movie studios, kind of how that correlation back when movie studios were taking over things. A new movie by Joel Schumacher called Trespass, it's starring Nicolas Cage and Nicole Kidman. Yeah. It was premiered on October 14th and it was released on YouTube on the exact same day. So now instead of going to movie theaters, wow. people can watch it online for mm -hmm. $6.99 in the comforts of their own home. So you're really seeing that convergence right now. Right. Hopefully the fear think... isn't there. Like I, I want them to embrace it because there's so much possibility. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem like, for me, I know there's been some conversation about it taking away from, you know, the independent guy at home making his own, putting his own stuff out there on, on YouTube. But for me, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's probably encouraging him to, now well, seeing that the big studios are also going so, there, and maybe mm -hmm. it gives him a direct, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Shira and I were just all. talking about this. There has been some concern by amateur video makers. By the people who the created algorithm the platform, was, Yeah, basically. the algorithm yeah. was apparently changed on YouTube back in July. Um, so now amateur right. videos are not as favored. So there's there's some concern in the amateur video community that that basically cultivated YouTube. Well, I'm interested hmm. just to quickly hear about the soap operas online. What you're hearing? Yeah. Uh, well, what we're you know what we're hearing right now um, is that this is going to be the you know essentially the same show, uh, less restrictions. Okay. Know, basically, you know more free. More romance. <laughs> than your normal soap opera. Really? No, but, but really, you know, there's basically um, no standards, you know, less standards and practice and all, on all those things. What about the budget, though? Because I, you guys okay. have supported yeah. so much. How do you maintain that? So I, I, again, don't really understand, but they're apparently going to be very close to the same budget of production. So wow. it's the same length of time, very similar cast, as much of the cast as we can bring on. We're trying to get as much of the same cast as possible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and through incredibly creative ways, you know, raising advertising dollars and all and also maybe second runs I'm I'm hearing, by the way, I'm not the authority on this. I'm hearing maybe you second could totally runs on cable. Him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I'm gonna like lose my position on this show. No. <laughs> but I think possibly second runs like a late maybe a a, a delayed Mm. Uh, showing on cable, so mm. you know the first runs oh, on, yeah, on yeah, online, raising some money, I mean, maybe that way. I mean, that's a loyal that's fan base. You know, I, I, mean, I, think it's it's a, I think it's a really exciting uh, topic. I, you know, I was hosting. Uh, we were talking about this uh, last yeah. night because all, all my children. You know, if it becomes a, a, a hit now on the web because of yeah. the fans. Yeah. That's to me is a lot of is a lot of power, you know, and, and it shows that the fans really support some of these shows. Mm -hmm. Not not to stay too long on this, but one of the things that I think is really interesting is as you guys probably know, every television in production as of January 2011 is internet capable. So many people are already viewing their shows through the internet on their television, so it doesn't necessarily have mm -hmm. to feel that different. The lines right? are being blurred. The lines are being yeah. blurred, yeah. blurred, and uh, and that's what you know. This company, Prospect Park, who now has all my Definitely. children, is kind of banking. So well, Google up. is actually expected <laughs> yeah. to make their final announcement by the end of the month. But yeah. a good example of a company that's successfully leveraging TV online is Daily Motion. They already have. 
partnerships with Crackle, Hulu, Spike, and MTV. And just last week, inked a deal with the billion view YouTubers, Clever TV. And let us know your thoughts and questions, of course, in the chat room and by tweeting us throughout the show at What's Trending using hashtag WTLive. Now, yesterday was the one-month anniversary already of Occupy Wall Street, which is still averaging 1,000 social mentions an hour. That's a lot. What started as a protest in Lower Manhattan has grown into an international movement that now appears could actually have a meaningful impact on the 2012 presidential race. The Obama camp has indicated that the sentiments of the 99% will be a central focus in their re-election bid. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor, who had called OWS a mob, is now backpedaling, and GOP candidates have all changed their tune. How about that, Eliana? Are you surprised? Uh, no, well, actually, one of our cast members, Justine Bateman, is down. She missed the premiere because she was down <laughs> during the... I'm sure. She's a protest. She's an activist type. She is a little Norma Ray. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? You do you take girl. that seriously? I mean, what are you thinking about the movement and how it's evolved? I, you know, I, th I think it's exciting. I mean, again, there, there's a time happening where, you know, people have much more power, I think, than, you know, than we, than we realize. And you can... You know, you can really, you know, do something important with a, you know, with a yeah. group. Um, Cameron, we'll will see be, where they go. Yeah, you know? will this be a deciding factor in terms of who wins president, oh, who jumps man. on board this whole thing? I, I don't think I'm, I'm the guy to ask. <laughs> I just think it's so fascinating that through social media, <laughs> at how least these you're things, honest. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really not. <laughs> I you, love he, that. Here's the thing: is I was completely in the dark about a, a lot of a lot of this until I, I, I'm yeah. blanking on the name of the documentary that won the Academy Award last year. That, uh, uh, you know about the crash in 2008, the deregulation yeah, of Wall yeah. Street. And, and, and obviously this movement and how quickly it can spread through social media. Yeah. Like it's, it's you know, yeah. before the demonstrations and the activists and now with social media, it's just like, it I just feel, seems I, like. I wonder if there's fear now, like the politicians are okay. Okay, maybe we should take this a bit seriously. That's, uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> These trends that happen on the street or through social media, you know, kind of rock the establishment. And that's yeah. why I think it's a very interesting well, it is, thing. Uh, if it's, nothing else, the education yeah. aspect of it, just getting the, just getting the information out to people like me, that mm. were completely in the dark about things like this and just educating and, and, and hearing both sides, you know? And, and so I, for me, it's so invaluable. Yeah, it is trend, I mean, it's obviously trending online, yeah. Occupy Wall Street slash W-O-W-S, but um, we've got some celebrity tweeters who, along with Justine Bateman, who've been very active in the whole movement. Um, Russell Simmons, also known as Uncle Rush on Twitter, recently tweeted, this was tweeted over 100 times, I would like a ban against any corporate contributions made to politicians or parties. So there's already people starting to converse about the possibility of this movement taking a place in politics. Yeah, because the whole thing, the debate was there's no focus. What do they really want? They're just well, a bunch yeah. of possible, you know, they're mm -hmm. hippies, people that are unemployed, protesting. Like, where are we going to see a real goal here? And we might be seeing that some people are even saying, could this become a special interest group or its own political party? Is that possible, Cameron? What, what, what's, what's wrong with protesting and not knowing exactly what the answer is? Like, what's wrong with people getting out there and saying, this is going on, everybody should know about easy this. To what, what are we going to yeah. do? Like, I don't know. I don't the know what's, what's wrong with people sort of putting the word out there. Well, like, the for people on the receiving end want a proposal. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, they want to <laughs> see some kind of organized, systematic way yeah. to structure things in a way that's that's you know that's beneficial for everybody involved so yeah. there's nothing wrong with the protests themselves yeah. but people want an organization yeah, involved. I guess that's, well that's the problem cool. is is that they have this general assembly and they're saying it's not about having a leader they want to go against that establishment mm -hmm. and so it is about the process of finding what's right but all they do know is there that this is the sentiment out there and something needs to be done mm -hmm. right and there's this you know the image of that it, you know it shakes you up because we're so programmed into you know the news what, who's on television, what the news. So like, the, you assume this is chaos, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it's, it's out of the control of the establishment, mm -hmm. and, and I always think that that's good. Well, interestingly enough, we all know what it takes to go, run for president, billions of dollars, millions of dollars. Yeah, billion, now, yeah. yeah, so now is it interesting that they want to get these people's support, but ultimately they probably need Wall Street support as well. How ironic yeah. is that? Right, so well, what yeah. do Uncle you, Rush wants a ban on yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So how are they supposed to be running? Is about throwing all those rules out the door and kind of doing it in a more creative way. When I ran for president, <laughs> <laughs> on, on all my children. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>
That's right. And it was a very successful campaign. I wouldn't want to be in one of the apartments, though, nearby. That's like oh, the I one thing. I've seen those tweets. I have friends that are around these yeah. places. No, but and like, yeah. Could it you guys keep it down? The answer is like, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's just, it seems really messy. And, and I, I, you know, it's when you, to going back to your question about how do you, how, how do you sort of weigh to both sides? And I don't know, I, you know, in the end, I'm, I'm sure money outweighs. But you know, when you I'm know sure people, diff- I mean, when I people know. like yeah, you are getting more aware and involved, that's yeah. when you know it's becoming less just an activist niche movement that's just online. Yeah. And while many have had their doubts with political leaders starting to join the conversation, and acknowledge the movement, does that actually make you take it more seriously? Let us know which candidate you think could best represent Occupy Wall Street. Leave a comment in the chat room and by heading over to facebook.com slash what's trending right now. It's time now for like or dislike, where we go thumbs up or thumbs down on the apps and memes we've all been talking about. Make sure we know what you like and dislike by casting your vote on our Facebook page now. This is my favorite segment, you guys. Those two just got okay. really excited. I, just that know. music. <laughs> like, dun, 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 dun. Their ears totally we, perked we, up. We, we, All right, well, this is serious this stuff, guys. This go. story is Come serious. On. Decide Wait. which form of birth control to use can be a tough decision. It really it's, can. It's tough for me. Especially when you're playing <laughs> Birth Control Brigade. Bring it on. The free app created by the Society of Obstetricians and mm. Gynecologists of Canada. I was hoping Those to Canadians. get that word properly. Yeah, that was a Challenges one. players to stop sperm from reaching a waiting ovum and thereby stopping pregnancy by selecting from variously priced birth control defenses and placing them strategically in the field of play. Pretty complicated. Yeah. Makes it make it sound complicated. I kind of tuned out there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> All guys do, don't they, when it comes it to that? There's like a lot of information about birth control, right. and I was like, I don't know. Eliana, let's yes. go to the female here. Yeah, can yes. you say something? The gamification of uh, birth control. Yes, can you, uh, can, can you pull out of this game? <laughs> oh! oh. oh. What? What? That should have been my line. Come on. Oh, Show totally it from me. Stop it. That should have been me. Go ahead. Your turn. All right, Mike or dislike, Cameron? Well, you know, I am Canadian. You are? So I'm Canadian. I'm biased. You see? Are you? We're, we're like, yeah, we're Montreal. Are you yeah, so, no, that's, I that's like lame. It. That's a, that's, that's a lame. Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like it. Again, it's just the education factor. Yeah, because you know, uh, you're getting people playing around and yeah. just bringing awareness to it. I'm, I'm going to like it. We would hate you if you didn't like it. You know? yeah. like, that's right. Don't mess with us. Yeah. <laughs> what, what? All right. Well, more, like of our, more of our viewers like, like this than just like this. Like or dislike? I, I mean, I'm, I'm going for the like. Okay. I'll go for the like. There you go. Positive here. here. Yeah. So okay. more of our viewers like this and dislike this. I don't know if they're what the ratio is male versus female there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but just so you know, you can you can play the game. You can look at it at on the on the app's Facebook page. And you can also go to sexualityandyou.ca if you'd like more information on it. Sexuality.u? It's that easy. Sexualityandyou.ca. All right. And singer <laughs> Lance Bass has launched his own Got boy it. band called Heart to Heart. The quintet has dropped their first single, Facebook this is Official. Yeah, this is good. And the music video for it was so bizarre that there was a serious debate in our office as to whether or not it was real. Check it out. Google, you're so fine. Your piece is so hot. I I was feeling that. I was so gonna wear my hair like that today. Well, <laughs> that, is, that would have been really embarrassing. What is that? The metro look? That's like uber metrosexual. Yeah. I don't know. I actually am friends with that guy, the one main guy. So then I, I like his. We're friends on Facebook. Yeah. All right. Well, do you like this? Like or dislike? Um, Cameron? You know, I I I've met Lance. And I think you know he's. Or are you he's a, a boy band guy. hater? I I'm not, I'm not really. I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of the boy band, and this one in particular seems like they're trying a little bit too hard. They're really made up, and I. You guys, you should bring together your I own have, boy band. I have to yeah. dislike it. I I'd call them like a man band. I'm gonna start my own man band. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome. I'm gonna start Please my own do man it. Band. What's wrong with that? David Beebe, producer. You're gonna produce it. Is that, yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> All right, Ileana, like or dislike? Oh, God, I'm going to, is there a love category? That's, I mean, that's bring nice. Bring it on. I love it. You love it. It's so campy. Nice. How can you not? Is this real or not? Is I don't it, know. I'm not it, sure. it, it is, you know, some of the some of the styling, I watched the whole video uh, back there, and some of the styling is just genius. It's just genius. They knew what they were doing. They knew yeah, what they were up they to. Did. They got me. The, uh, oh, the, the sweatshirt with the blazer <laughs> look, you know. So there's some really. The makeup. It's very yeah. real to them. The hair. It's very they real to them. They were feeling it. Oh, yeah. According oh, yeah. to their oh, yeah. website, the Heart to Heart website, 
Um, the reason the band came up with that name is because that's what they want to connect to their fans Aww. around the world. They want to be heart to heart with them. I like so, that. I like that. Yeah. Can we start I a girl like band? Yeah. 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 I'm going to go to a like. 100% of our viewers uh, yeah, that dislike this, this, though. By is the that way. right? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> 100%. Have you ever had? 100%. Have you had? 100%. Percent? Have you had 100 guys it's unanimous. Jealous. Guys are jealous. Yeah, it's yeah. true. There is a jealousy factor. <laughs> I think I'm going to go is this for Halloween. This would be a great, <laughs> actually, get a group of people together. Yeah, and, I'm in. And, and what would, would our girl band be called? Yeah. Girl band, I don't know. You tell me. Chest to chest? Man. Chest to All right. chest. <laughs> well, if, if you are chest someone, you heart is occupying Wall Street, make sure they have the new Android app. I'm getting arrested. This is true. Is Quadrant 2 true. has developed an app that allows users to send a custom pre-written message to friends, family, and lawyers with a click of one button. Yeah. When you get nabbed by the popo, quickly tap the bullseye <laughs> on the app, and all of your designated contacts will be notified of your whereabouts. What's Ileana, the <laughs> I'm getting arrested app, like or dislike. I'm genius. Yeah. I was just hysterical. <laughs> I wish like uh, yeah, I needed this in high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. I, Mom, I'm sorry, I Mom. Don't, I don't know whether I, I like it or be home I, late. I dislike it. It's just a real indication of what's happening in society. <laughs> and we're all like they're arrested. creating an app to prepare yeah, yeah. for being arrested. And do, it's do we free, need to like kind of break that apart? It's free to the 99%. Apart, percent. It's what? Very important. It's free to the 99% of Occupy Wall Street. Um, and it's actually a really great shortcut for sending mass text messages to people when you're in a hurry for anything. So okay, a yes. lot of tech bloggers are saying that this app could be used well far beyond the whole Occupy Wall Street movement. It's just yes. the beginning. It's just the beginning. Of a movement of uh, digital and yeah. digitally connected More of my personal self out there as quickly as possible. I love yeah. it. Well, you're online now, That's so right, this is yeah, just the beginning. I like it. Or if any, of your I like it. if any of your proposals need to run away, they can get the app. That's right. Tweet, you know, text their friends, be like, get me out of here now. Right. This is freaking <laughs> right. me out. That's right. All That's right, well, uh, a big thanks to our awesome panel. Thank yeah, you. you guys survived. Cameron, you survived. I don't know how. I'm not sure I did. <laughs> no, you really did. Of course, you can keep up to date with Cameron Matheson on Twitter at Cameron Matheson and watch his new show, Ultimate Proposal, right now on Yahoo. Ileana Douglas is followable using Ileana Rama. Yes, at Ileana Rama. And watch the new season of Easy to Assemble at Easy to Assemble Series. Dot com. You guys rock. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And please keep letting us know your thoughts and questions by tweeting us at Which Trending using hashtag WTLive. Gotta remind you, just saying. Well, our Innovator series is all about the people using emerging technology to change the way we see our world. Video games have become a multi-billion dollar industry. And as with many industries, profits are at odds with risk and innovation. But one company is dedicated to exploring and celebrating groundbreaking independent work in gaming. IndieCade is an international festival of independent games that aims to create opportunities and possibly public demand for those passionately working at the bleeding edge of game development. Take a look. My name is Stephanie Farish and I am the CEO of IndieCade and I spend the year along with a group of very dedicated people working to get the best independent games of the year here to Culver City. We're showing off Sissy's Magical Pony Corn Adventure, which is a throwback to point and click adventure games, I guess from the early 90s. Uh, but what's unique about it is it's a game that I made uh, with my daughter, who's five years old. For the mainstream public, I think there's this misconception that games have to be about shooting people in the face. And there's this stigma attached to games, and they think they're all violent, and they're all dark, and they're all nasty. So I think it was really refreshing for people to see a video game that's, that's none of those things. It's genuine, it's honest, uh, it's fun, it's crazy, it's weird, and you can really enjoy yourself and really laugh out loud, but you're never mean to anybody, you're not hurting anybody, and you're just having a really good time. So one person wears the disc headset as the receiver, and the other person has a magnet on their tongue. And when they kiss, I can detect tongue movement. I wanted to use emotion, like a love and affection, and I think it's a really strong input. So I made this one to actually control the game with your emotion and heart. Today at IndieCade, we are playing Twisty Annapolis 500. It's a new twist on a party game you might recognize. 
kids get to play and so often it seems like adults don't get to. And I say, why? Why is that fair? Where is that written? When you get a group playing a game together, just, they discover their strengths and weaknesses as a team. And that's something we really like to give to the groups. Well, being at Indicate, it means a lot for me because it's the first time to actually see other people like a gamer at work and it's really great to get feedback from them. That's really awesome. I really appreciate it. Welcome to Influencer, our series of conversations with the world's thought leaders, the people creating the trends that we are all talking about. Wilmer Valderrama kept us laughing and won our hearts as the adorable Fez on I really the did. 70s show. You're not supposed to come in during my intro. <laughs> This is awkward. Well, this past year he transformed into Eduardo Fresco to teach really us all how to fiesta. Thank you for that confirmation. Now he's jumping on Kickstarter to crowdsource finance his very first documentary, Wilmer. Welcome to What's Trending. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Please, guys, sit. Have a seat. Have a seat. No, you need no, to stop no. them from running up Everybody to you. Everybody's standing up. It's really uh, very flattering. Thank you. So, first off, you're in the middle of shooting a new NBC show, Away. Yeah, I'm doing a show called Awake with 20th Century Fox for the NBC network. Um, Howard Gordon, who uh, uh, currently has a Homeland on, which is incredible, mm -hmm. and obviously known from, from 24, did this awesome series that is just very surreal, you know, about these two parallel dreams. You know, it's, it's, really, it's really unique. It's really a fun show. And it's very different from your other character that is, has become so iconic, really. Thanks. <laughs> You're an I really use that word a lot when I describe my body of work. It's very iconic, some of the things that I've that done. That character is so classic. Like, everyone, no matter when you watch the show, you laugh at that. We watched in the makeup room replays of that 70s show. No, thank you. Well, I, I mean, I, even if you didn't want to, you can't skip it. It's in like eight different channels. Like, but it's, very, it's been very fun. It's really sweet to see that you, you did something that you loved so much and, and that, the, you know, the, a couple of generations have been able to somehow really been in tune with it and, and yeah. liked it so much, you know. So I, I'm excited and I, I try to challenge myself. I, I took a nice break in, from in front of the camera mm -hmm. after I finished that and um, and then now I'm really excited to put my hands in a bunch of different things. Well, what's Vega like, this character? Vega, playing? I play this uh, uh, rookie LAPD detective, you know, who gets promoted to be partners with Jason Isaacs, uh, his character named Michael Burden. And then um, um, eventually he's part of, um, it's, it's, you know, it's such what? a, like, it's his own show, like, the, just to actually describe the actual show. But, but uh, you know, he gets in his car accident. Michael Brayden, uh, Jason Ice's character, get, gets in a car accident. You know, when he wakes up from the accident, his son had died. And uh, when he goes to sleep, wakes up the next morning, his son is alive, and his wife is the one that died in the yeah. accident and finds himself living in two parallel worlds. It's very dramatic. It's, uh, very, it's very dark. It's yeah. very dark. And I, I play this, um, I play his partner. Yeah. You know, his detective partner in one very reality. Cool. And it's, it's crazy. It's really fun. So also with Eduardo Fresco. Yeah. That's a bit of a whole different extreme. It was fun. What's his know? story? It was well, like your alter ego or something? Well, you know, Akiva Sheffer and I, who, you know, Akiva being one of the masterminds of the Lonely Island uh, guys. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, um, you know, they, we were, you know, talking, we developed a couple of things together, whatever, and they said, you know, I imagine if, if Enrique Iglesias and Ricky Martin had a baby. I imagine know, that all the time. You know, which, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always secretly wanted to be a Menudo, you know? <laughs> so that's why I think that this was a really, really fun project for me. But we did this, and, and it's become kind of a fun thing. The fans have, you know, something got Something that goes viral. It. Yeah, something goes viral and stuff. And I, we, we shot this music video. Um, from this character named Eduardo Fresco, which is kind of like a, a funny what alter ego. That? People say it's not so much an alter ego because it's very me. <laughs> You're like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> it is really me right now, but, um, but it's fun. It's fun. I'm having a good time with it. And now, Yo Mama. I was so surprised. You're bringing it digital. It mm -hmm. very much brings you in this place where you're an entrepreneur online now. Yeah, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've understand fairly quickly. And, I, and I've, you know, I've also, in my experience, is that a lot of our, our fans, you know, the, the access to straight up fan to artists, you yeah. know, has been so, so groundbreaking when it comes to social media and, and you know, the internet period, you know, seeing, seeing web series, you know, that, you know, are, are going to be able to reach the fans in, yeah. in such an organic way. Uh, and the specific fan, you know, that, that actually is going to really like that genre of programming, I think it's really great. Um, and, and I think your mom has been such an internet favorite, I thought it would be really fun to do like kind of an uncensored version of of that show somehow, uh, but now you know this is like a brand new show too. It's a whole different thing, you know. Yeah. So what is it? It's gonna be called something different. Yeah. It's. I mean, I'm. I i do not know if I can. It just. I don't know if I can really Your talk agents about told it. Me you can talk about it. Okay. I'm if, they, if they say <laughs> okay, you know. Uh, but so just lucky for you. Uh, I'm working. Uh, I'm working with, uh, with a few people, and and uh, it's gonna be called uh, Swagbaggers. What does that mean? 
You'll figure Am it I out. Am I supposed to know? You'll figure it I out when it hits on my sister. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. My virgin ears. <laughs> my virgin ears. <laughs> um, no, we, we, uh, we do kind of like a, an eight mile version of, of kind of what you thought your mama would be and make it more underground and the things that we couldn't do on, on television, we do it online. I mean, did you see the web getting this big? I mean, you, you come from such a traditional TV background. Could, did, did you see this all happening? Are you, you know, I, 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 you know one, one thing was internet and, and researching and, and Googling things, yeah, yeah. you know, and the other thing, the, the actual ability of, 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 you know, of creating original content that's actually at the quality you know, of, um, of any network or any studio. You know, some of these short films, some of these, you know, web series are, are just as the same caliber as a television series, you know, and, and have just an incredible, you know, performers, you know, and I'm like, like a television series or a primetime network would have. So, so I gotta tell you, you know, that uh, internet as a vessel of entertainment is, is, is such a great, um, such a great platform for the fans to, to, to really, you know, find their specific genre. You know, yeah. not just being on a television and watching yeah. the entire television schedule and then eventually finding the show they love. So now you are here to announce a big Kickstarter campaign for right. a documentary that you're producing called Shred. Yeah. So that's, that's very exciting. Very exciting, very exciting. I, I discovered this kid named Asher who, who, uh, who became a YouTube sensation um, yeah. and this little video that just showed him, you know, skateboarding at six years old and, and, um, he, you know, when you see this little video you guys are about to see, you, you'll see, you understand that you're, you're looking at someone uh, at the beginning, you know, someone that, that's soon to be, to, be, uh, to be an icon, you know, so it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, iconic. Yeah. <laughs> um, I gravitate a lot towards you iconic stole characters. stole that word from me, actually. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look at the trailer right now. A boy in the United States has become an internet sensation after his dad uploaded a video of his incredible skateboarding talent. I'm right now on the scene with seven-year-old Asher Bradshaw. When it comes to skateboarding, Asher Bradshaw is next. Hi, my name is Asher. I'm six years old. I've been skiing for 14 months. Hi, I'm Wilmer Valderrama, and I'm the producer of this amazing documentary about this incredible young man. Well, that's a look at the new film, Shred, and we're now joined by the star of the film, seven-year-old Asher Bradshaw. Oh! We actually met, though, a year ago. You were on my radar. Yeah. <laughs> what is it like to see now this all come to life in a bigger way for you? Well, I'm uh, proud of it. I'm glad I, I do it. Well, it's fun for me. Does Wilmer make you anxious? Do you like, what is it like working with him? <laughs> it's, it's very fun. iconic for him. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like? Well, it's fun. Yeah. You we have a good time. Him. You we... bring him out on the town in Hollywood. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> we go and shred the town. Oh. Uh, no, we have a we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. Him and uh, and his dad um, and I become you know good yeah. friends. And uh, we actually went to the Cars premiere together, and that was pretty cool. We got to see the, the Cars premiere uh, in 3D together and stuff. He got a little taste of red carpet and he wore a little dress shirt and a tie and the, the paparazzi got a, you know, got a field day with him. And it's and different than the Venice you know, skate park. Absolutely. absolutely. And now, so let's talk about this Kickstarter campaign and, and why did you, you decide to go on Kickstarter and what exactly you're doing? I was so inspired by the format of Kickstarter, you know, and the yeah. fact that the people can be you know, emotionally uh, involve, you know, um, into these ideas, you know, mm -hmm. into these things, you know, that, that all these people, you know, specifically because nowadays, um, you know, there's a little bit for everyone. And, and now thanks to the online world, you'll be able to specifically find that destination. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, I, I thought that Kickstarter was such a great place for, for people to actually be invested in, in someone's, someone's journey, you know. Yeah. And, and when I met him, I said, man, this is, I, I want to be responsible um, I, I just, when I was a little kid, man, I, um, I had aspirations of being, you know, something that no one in my family tree has yeah, ever even yeah. thought of, yeah. you know. And when I look at him and his family and I, and I see him and, and, his, and his, uh, his humble stars and beginnings, you know, I just go, you know, it'd be amazing for the world to be inspired by this kid, you know. And, uh, and him doing the right documentary, you know, and, and showing the world that, you know, dreaming early definitely pays off 
you know, sooner than you think, you know, it's, it's, um, it's ideal. Well, it's in the story of him, but it's also in the process of how you're putting this all together. Yeah. And, and so, Asher, what is it like to see, this all started from one viral video? Mm -hmm. What was that yeah. like to see, what was the video? It was just about me, like, skateboarding and doing all of these tricks that, uh, this guy, he was really taping me. Yeah. Who are your idols? Who do you look up to? Mm, Any skateboarders out that. there? Well, there's a lot of friends that I have, and they're mostly scavens. Oh, Tony Hawk or any of them? Mm -mm. No! Whoa! Sean Wilde was there. What? One time Sean Wilde was there. Oh, cool. You're creating your own path, man. Who are some of your favorite skateboarders? Mm, Sean White. He's cool. He's in LA. You gotta hang out with him. And now, how is this working now? You're trying to raise money for the post production. Everything is shot. Yeah, we shot uh, hundreds and hundreds of, of, uh, of footage. And uh, what we're gonna do now is uh, put it together and make it a film. And um, the idea is to hopefully go to a few, you know, festivals. But you know, also the idea is to to go theatrical with it as well. Well, we think it's really cool. We support not only independent content creators, but the new way of doing it, which you're definitely doing that. Yeah, no, and I and I encourage everyone. I encourage everyone to just you know log on to Kickstarter.com and and check out his video. You know, I think that from the video and you see the the vision of what we're looking at. I think it's it's so important to to empower the, you know a younger generation to to inspire the rest of, yeah. of the youth, you know, to take charge early. And, and uh, he's one of those uh, few people in, in our lifetime that you, you feel right about, you yeah. know? And I think that he's, he's definitely gonna change a lot of things. Very cool, high fives. Give me oh. a high five, high five, Wilmer. Yeah. You can follow Wilmer on Twitter, at Willie Bill. Look out for the premiere of Awake, coming soon on NBC. And to donate to the documentary, Shred, go to shredthemovie.com. Thank you so much, oh my God. <laughs> my tablet's falling down. Thank you! Now it's been a week of epic rack, epic battles on the internet. Here are the top five videos that everyone's been sharing. Check it out. It's been a week of epic battles on the internet. Here what? are the top five videos that everyone's been sharing. Dora the Explorer went up against some snipers in this violent parody. Can you say sniper, no sniping, three times? Sniper, no sniping! Sniper, no sniping! Sniper! Apple's iPad running iOS 5 faced off against Microsoft Slate using Windows 8. As for basketball versus frisbee, no one really cares who won. It's just incredible to watch. Foo Fighters took a lighter approach from responding to the Westboro Baptist Church protest of their Kansas City concert. My daddy said, keep it clean. And finally, a mountain biker unwittingly battled a red heart to beat and found that the buck and the bike stop here. <laughs> For more of what we're watching now, head over to our blog on whatstrending.com. That was the video for That Girl by David Choi. We talked earlier about new business models for independent artists. Well, David Choi is definitely an example of that. When it comes to YouTube, he has over 900,000 subscribers and over 98 million total video views, which has enabled him and his music to get picked up by everyone from networks to brands. David Choi, welcome to What's Trending. <laughs> Woo! Great to see you. Thank you. So Thank what you. have the differences been for you from traditional mm -hmm. and following that path to yeah. what you're doing right now? Well, first off, uh, doing it yourself, you have more yeah. control and mm -hmm. freedom to do anything you want. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I'm releasing an album next week and I, I can just do that without asking anyone. Mm -hmm. So um, I like that, I like that control. And you've been on YouTube for a while. What got you started? 
Yeah, I've, um, boredom. <laughs> just like most people, I think. Um, you just, I just posted a video at the time I was writing songs and producing. Mm -hmm. And um, I just put up a fun little song about YouTube. Uh, just a comedy song. And then it got featured. And now I have fans. And now <laughs> it's a full-time career for you. Yeah, yeah. Are people surprised when they hear that? I'm surprised uh -huh. hearing that. Um, because um, it was not something that I really planned on doing or mm -hmm. you know, performing and stuff like that. So. And now, how do you continue creating? You create songs almost every week on your YouTube channel? I write a lot, yeah, I write how a lot of songs. How do you do that? I mean, that's a lot for an artist, someone to be inspired that way all the time. Yeah, it's definitely tough, but there's inspiration everywhere. Um, you can just write about anything in life, and um, that's, that's the cool thing about music. You have to feed the YouTube beast. And now you exactly. also have a new album, <clears throat> Forever and Ever. Mm -hmm. What's that all about? What was the inspiration behind that? Um, just It's just a... A bunch of songs that I've written throughout the past, you know, a couple of years, yeah. and um, it's it's a different sound from my previous two, but I, I like it. So I what's like the it. sound? It's like a little more popular, more up tempo, and happier. I think. Are you a happier person? Yeah, I'd I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling the positive happiness energy here. All right, well, here to perform by my side, live on what's trending, it's David Choi. Thank you. Woo. song from my new album there it is you are my friend and it just happened time went by and we just lost traction you are my friend you are my friend you got your buddies and i got mine with different people within different times you are my friend you are my friend when we were young, we had our crew Looking for trouble every day, acting like fools Then we grew up like we all do You got a girlfriend and I got one too my friend and it just happened time went by and we just lost traction you were my friend you were my friend you got your buddies and I got mine with different people we're in different times you were my friend you were my friend yeah we grow up but we're not that far we still say hello, but it's not the same at all. It's like we both let go. I guess that's how it is. I guess it's good to know he's in a happy place. You, my friend, and it just happened. Time went by and we just lost traction. You were my friend. You were my friend. You got your buddies and I got mine with different people with in different times. You were my friend, you were my friend. Yo, we made some good memories. All I remember seeing is teeth. Hey, you're gone and that's okay. Yeah. Honestly, it's fine with me. That's the way it's supposed to be As long as we keep saying cheese You were my friend and it just happened Time went by and we got distracted You were my friend You were my friend You got your buddies and I got mine With different people, we in different times You were my friend Oh, you were my friend. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, you were my friend. Yeah. Ba 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 ba. Do 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 do
Thank you. Woo! I love that. That was awesome. David Choi, the new album is Forever and Ever. It comes out October 25th, but you can pre order it right now at davidchoymusic.com. I'd also like to thank Wilmer Valderrama, Eliana Douglas. You guys could come up, Cameron Matheson. And of course you, yes you, all of you for stopping by today. Mm -hmm. For more on today's stories along with interactive updates on breaking topics, behind the scenes photos, or to comment on what you've seen on the show, be sure to check out our Facebook page. And remember, we are online all the time at whatstrending.com and on Twitter at whatstrending. See you soon.